I survived 100 days of Skyblock in hardcore Minecraft. In a world with nothing but an island floating over the void and darkness over the face of the deep, you have but only one life to survive with. This is the story of how I expanded my land, conquered my enemies, and fulfilled my legacy. It all began with a dream. A dream of conquering the impossible. But as they say, the path to greatness is never easy. In the beginning, hope burned bright and I dared to defy the odds. I set foot on this floating island, ready to carve out a new existence in this unforgiving realm. I began by removing the grass in hopes of collecting seeds. Seeds would allow me to farm wheat, which I can use to craft bread for food. This is crucial for my early success. Without food, I'll certainly wither away and die. As I eagerly opened the chest, my eyes lit up at the sight of two invaluable treasures, a bucket of lava and a block of ice. These are the building blocks of survival. The essential components of a cobblestone generator that- uh, Is it raining already? Bruh. A cobblestone generator would allow me to expand my island, giving me room to build structures and more farms for the future. So I removed the first few layers of dirt and cut down the very first tree, obtaining saplings and an apple. These items would serve to help my progression in the very near future. But just before I can make my mark, a heart-wrenching moment occurred. As I plummeted into the void, my dreams shattered into countless pieces. But with every setback is a setup for a comeback. And so I returned to the skies, ready to face my challenge once more. Oh wait, this is Minecraft. Having set up a cobblestone generator and now having a spawning platform so that I could farm mobs and get bone meal, I decided to craft a furnace, smelt down some wood into coal, and craft a few torches. This would ensure that I don't get clapped by a zombie in the middle of the night while I'm trying to sleep. After lighting up my island a little bit, I decided to farm some cobblestone when I noticed a zombie walking across my bridge. So I wanted to test my drawbridge and see if it would work effectively. Uh, yeah, I, I think it works. So I went back to mining cobblestone a little bit, crafted a few pickaxes, and kept mining. My plan was to mine until the morning of day two. I wanted to get enough cobblestone to be able to expand my island and have room to start a farm for my trees and wheat so that I could start to have a steady source of food and not die. So I mined the night away until the next morning, and then I noticed an enderman had spawned in front of me. I wanted to craft a boat and trap him inside of it so I could kill him for pearls. I placed the boat down and successfully trapped him inside. I then crafted myself a sword and started swinging. Unfortunately, this greedy bastard didn't drop me anything. So after murdering the Enderman and not receiving any pearls, I decided to go check my mob platform for any bones. There were a few creepers alive still though, so I lured them back across the bridge to watch them fall to their death. Bye, have a great time! Fortunately, there were quite a few skeletons that died and I collected a good amount of bones. After collecting my bones, I went back to my island to start cutting down my trees. Now in order for me to start any farms, I would need more than one source of water. So I used a trick with seagrass that I saw online which creates multiple sources of water out of just one. You create a two block high enclosure out of dirt and place the water. Then you bone meal the dirt which makes seagrass. You then remove the first block of seagrass and collect the water. Now you have an infinite water source and you'll never go thirsty. Someone should have told this guy that. This will allow me to mine cobblestone for my generator while my crops are still growing. Now, at this point, I decided to transform this hunk of dirt into something more than just a rudimentary eyesore because, let's be honest, its current state was absolutely dreadful. So, that's what I did. With unwavering determination, I began by clearing away the unsightly remnants of my past mistakes, one singular block at a time, starting with the leaves. Then the cobblestone generator, which had served me well up until this point, but it was time to be moved. My crafting bench and my furnace. 
So now with a clear vision in mind, I rolled up my sleeves and got to work. I carefully carved out a 2x2 area, making room for the fountain that would soon take form. I placed the wood, and then the water, and after crafting the fountain's foundation, I turned my attention to the surrounding terrain, sculpting the displaced dirt into a neatly landscaped area. I crafted some slabs and placed them in the corners to add a bit more depth and detail to the design. After I was pleased with the fountain's design, I started extending my island's layout. I constructed simple bridges that would lead to future mob grinders and farms. After completing the bridges, dusk was approaching, so I swiftly crafted torches and placed them around the bridges, ensuring that no unwelcome mobs would spawn. With security in place, I turned my attention to rebuilding my cobblestone generator. And I may have gotten a little bit distracted extending the wooden slabs that I had previously placed. So with all my tasks for the day complete, my focus shifted to mining cobblestone for further expansion and beginning work on a mob grinder. As I mined through the night, I unexpectedly stumbled upon a valuable find. A zombie villager. Recognizing their significance for future trading, I swiftly trapped the undead villager in a boat. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know this at the time, but yeah, they can still hit you when they're in a boat. And their friends can join too. Now I kind of have a problem on my hands. So I need to get rid of the zombie without killing the zombie villager, and uh, I guess that works. I don't see how that... Uh, okay. With the zombie shenanigans over with, I went back to mining, and I mined all the way through the night until the morning of day three. Just as the sun began to rise, I remembered that sunlight burns zombies, which includes my zombie villager. So I quickly covered my not so friendly friend up and I rubbed some sunscreen on him to prevent any further burning. After rescuing my sun sensitive zombie buddy from a crispy fate, I decided to put some of my bone meal to good use. With a few clicks, I transformed it into a handful of seeds, kickstarting my journey towards becoming a true wheat farmer. Next up was the tree farm. I spaced some dirt out on one of the platforms and planted some saplings. This will allow me to keep a steady source of wood for later projects. Feeling adventurous, I decided to venture onto my mob platform. Little did I know a sneaky skeleton had already set its sights on me. Oh wait, I have an apple. <laughs> I'm fine. After regaining some health, I observed as the sun reduced the skeleton and the remaining mobs to a pile of dust. With just a creeper and a spider left, I thought it was manageable. The creeper met its end as I let it plummet into the void without a fuss. However, the spider was a different story. It nearly got the best of me, lunging and striking twice, leaving me with a mere one and a half hearts to spare. So after changing my diaper, and not a whole lot else to do, I decided to expand the platform where my trees were planted so that none of the saplings or the wood would fall into the void. After chopping down one of the biggest oak trees I've probably ever seen, I decided I should probably heal up just in case phantoms or any other mobs spawn. So I crafted myself a hoe, tilled some soil, and finally started my wheat farm. After planting the seeds and then bone milling them and doing that cycle a few times, I had enough wheat to be able to craft some bread. This would allow me to heal up to full HP so that I wouldn't be on 1 HP the entire rest of the day and probably die if a zombie farted on me. So at this point, I wanted to get started on building a proper mob grinder. While the makeshift platform had served me well up until this point, I'm not gonna lie, I was tired of fighting mobs to the point of near death and risking my entire progress up until this point. So I farmed some more wheat, made a few breadsticks, and chopped down a tree before mining the night away. And to save you the pain that I experienced this night, I will just go ahead and show you the morning of the next day with all my cobblestone. After witnessing the mobs meet their fiery end, you can probably guess my next move. 
I lured the creepers onto the bridge, delighting in their plunge into the void. I then headed to the platform and dispatched a spider and noticed something unusual. Yeah, the second spider couldn't hit me from there. I'm not sure what was going on, but normally I would just give it a gentle push off the edge and watch it fall, but since I was at full health and I needed some string to make beds, I felt bold enough to engage in a little spider tussle. As I faced off against the spider, our duel began. Each strike and dodge in a dance of determination and survival. But I won. After taking down the spider and collecting its string, I was ready to transform my island in preparation for the mob grinder. On the morning of day 5, I disposed of the remaining mobs and removed the platform once and for all. My plan was to remove the platform, replace it with a tree farm, and then build the mob grinder on the other side of my island. So I did just that. I built a staircase leading up to the new area for where my tree farm would be. I placed some dirt, and then planted my saplings. Feeling satisfied with how my island looked now, I crafted some pickaxes and once again, you guessed it, I mined all night. I wanted to get enough cobblestone so that I could build the mob grinder the next day. After a night spent mining cobblestone, I awoke to find fully grown trees. A welcome sight as my wood supply had been dwindling. Without hesitation, I set to work chopping them down to replenish my resources. And so, on the sixth day, I found myself alternating between mining cobblestone and chopping wood for the better part of the day. As boring as this was, it was worth it because I had finally obtained enough cobblestone to begin building. And as I started building, I was rudely interrupted. A group of fandoms swooped in and suddenly attacked me, sending me into a panic. I stumbled and... Yeah. I landed on half a heart. Barely surviving, I ran away and boxed myself in for safety. After soaking my underwear, I ate some bread and recovered my health back to full. And not wanting to risk dying, I cowered in my box until the next morning. So, thinking that the coast was clear, I removed the roof and spotted not only the phantoms, but also a zombie. So I quickly turned into Usain Bolt and ran like my life depended on it. Well, it did. And with all the mobs taken care of, I could finally get back to work on my mob grinder. Yeah, I ran out of cobblestone. As you probably could have guessed by now, I ran out of cobblestone again. It's been two full days since I started the creation of this mob grinder and I still wasn't finished. The only good news is that I got so much done in those two days that I was certain I would finish it by tomorrow. I also remembered that I could add another stream of water which would allow me to mine twice as much cobblestone. This also meant that I was losing more cobblestone to the lava, but that didn't really matter. I was getting more cobblestone overall, which I would need to not only finish the mob grinder, but I would also soon need to go to the nether and build a zombie pigment farm to get gold ingots in order to make golden apples, which I would definitely need if I wanted to obtain villagers. 
So I just mined away the rest of the day until just before the sun went down and apparently I didn't learn my lesson about being on high buildings at nighttime in Minecraft because of course phantoms came and ran me off again. Except this time I was expecting them and I didn't fall straight onto the cobblestone and leave myself with only half a heart and nearly dying. This time I just ran away and blocked myself into the cobblestone generator like a man and mined away until the next morning. When morning came around, I quickly ran to my mob grinder to complete it, and I also realized that my stream of water had become a breeding ground for fish. There wasn't really a whole lot left to do. I added the platforms, making sure that they were too wide in between each of them so that I could place water. I filled in the rest of the roof. Added the trap doors so that the mobs would be tricked into walking into them. Added the water, shut all the trap doors and then cut down some more wood because I ran out until the morning of day nine. I admired my fish, placed the remaining trap doors, and then filled in the chamber that the mobs would have hauled through with the rest of my cobblestone. Now all that was left was to remove the torches so mobs would start spawning and then build the killing area so I could start farming. But of course, I was attacked by phantoms once again and they hit me out of the water, but this time I was prepared. So not really able to do much with phantoms in the area, I ran to my cobble generator, and you probably already guessed what I was going to do. Spend another night mining. When the morning of day 10 came around, I checked to make sure that the coast was clear, went to my mob grinder and removed the stream of water, and then realized that I did not set up a proper killing area before removing the torches. So now my mob grinder was completely full of mobs, and yeah. Luckily I was able to clear them out from a distance, and place some slabs down. This was probably the biggest milestone in my progression this far, because now I would be able to get an unlimited supply of bones and string. I could also trap zombie villagers and a witch. This would allow me to cure the zombie villagers into normal villagers so that I could start trading for armor and weapons in preparation for the dragon fight. Oh, and speaking of zombie villagers, do you see that? Literally seconds after I finished the mob grinder, I had already gotten a zombie villager. So I towered up and blocked off the mob grinder to separate him from the rest. I used my axe to clear all of the mobs except the villager. If I used my sword, it would do damage to all of the mobs at once and kill him. I crafted a boat and placed it down. And then I started expanding my platform and also added rails so that he wouldn't fall off. And broke him free from his cage, and it seems he needed a bit of a nudge to get into the boat, but... My plan was a success. Now the only thing left to do to get villagers was get two golden apples and a witch. Now, today must have been my lucky day, because when I was clearing my inventory out... Did, did you catch that? Yep, that was a witch. During the time I spent trapping the zombie villager, a witch had already spawned and was in my mob grinder. And so I prepared a platform to trap her in until I could get the gold that I needed to craft the golden apples. And not realizing how to push boats with mobs in them, something very mysterious happened to my zombie villager. He just disappeared right before my eyes. I still don't know what happened to that guy. So now, just like before, I prepared to trap the witch, but little did I know it was going to be one of the most annoying things I'll ever do in this game mode. Oh my god. Bruh. Well, this is fun. So, yeah. I was fed up with it, so I just mined away the night until the morning and figured I would deal with it then. On the morning of day 11, I farmed some wheat and made myself some bread to heal back up. I chopped down all my trees, replanted the saplings, harvested the sugarcane, and finally crafted some chests to do some much needed inventory management. Then it was time to face my enemy again. God help me. 
Well, at least I figured out how to push boats now. But it was just... I nearly die every time I try. You disgust me. So after basically wasting the entirety of day 11, I farmed up some wheat to stock up on food because I just knew I would need it if I was going to get this wicked witch trapped once and for all. So I put on my Nikes and ran straight towards the witch, pushing her back just far enough to block her off. And stared at her in disgust once more. Just to be extra safe. Ah, <sighs> Now I can finally farm in peace. After farming my mob grinder for a bit, I spent the night mining, chopping trees, fighting off phantoms as usual, and killing them as usual. Well, that part wasn't usual. And then I realized that one of the phantoms got stuck in the boat with my zombie villager. So I smacked him a couple times, and uh, he's no longer with us. On the morning of day 12, I decided it was time to finally go to the nether to build my pigment farm, since that was really the only thing holding me back at this point from obtaining villagers. Well, that and I also needed to trap another witch. You see, in the middle of the night, I paused my recording since I was just mining cobblestone and I didn't want to waste a lot of storage space. But basically what happened was, the witch kept trying to throw potions at me from across the island, but since she was blocked off, she was just hitting the cobblestone in front of her and poisoning herself. And she must have ended up killing herself with a potion of harming because I didn't see her anymore. So, yeah. And I hope you were paying attention because I've never lit another portal with a bucket of lava before. And after I built the frame of the portal, I just kind of placed some wood and lava down and went away to chop trees while I prayed that it would be lit by the time that I got back which it was. But I am still confused by the fact that the wood on top of the lava never set fire, which I thought was odd. I removed the bucket of lava and made the nether portal look a little bit nicer, and I farmed just a little bit, enough that I would have food so that I could fight pigmen in case I needed to, and I was finally ready to go to the underworld. I wasted no time at all placing down slabs and building a platform that would prevent any mobs from spawning on it. And once I got a platform under my feet, I got to work building the pigment farm. I'll leave a link to the video I used to build it in the description. Now that the pigment farm was completed, all I needed to do was farm enough gold to craft two golden apples. The only problem was that I needed to let the pigmen spawn first and shoot them with a bow. So yeah, it was taking way too long and I decided it would be better if I just sat at the top where I didn't have to keep shooting them and they would just continuously pile up. But while I was up there, I noticed a baby piglin and I wanted to trade with him. So I spent an ungodly amount of time trying to trap him and then finish off all the mobs and realized that it was a dumb idea because the piglin didn't really seem to like me too much. He kept trying to shoot me with a bow. So 
So I placed a boat down and lured him into it. And then I realized he could still shoot me with his bow. After realizing I wasn't getting anything I wanted, I decided to end his career and nearly died. If I had killed him a quarter of a second later than I did, I probably would have been dead. Well, certainly would have been dead, and my game and world would have been over. So I reopened the bridge and went back to farming gold. I went back and forth between crafting gold and killing pigmen and running up to the top of the pigmen farm and AFKing and shooting them with the bow and running back down and then killing more pigmen and then crafting gold and... <sighs> This went on for quite a while because when I got back to my world, it was already the night of day 15. It was all worth it though because I finally had enough gold ingots to craft my golden apples. I also forgot to mention that I had gotten a couple of iron ingots when I traded with the piglin before. I guess I was so caught up in him trying to kill me with his bow that I didn't realize it until now. So I crafted myself a shield and went to my mob grinder to start working towards trapping another witch and a second zombie villager since my last one disappeared. I hit the mob grinder most of the night until a witch spawned, and after nearly killing her on accident because I didn't recognize her, I was able to block off the rest of the mob grinder. I crafted a boat and placed it down to trap her, but I realized that I used up all my cobblestone for the pigmen farm, so I went to mine some cobble. And looking back now, this was a very stupid mistake, because when I came back, the witch had despawned. Yay. So on the morning of day 16, I sat at my mob grinder trying to get another witch to spawn. Again. And I kept sitting and kept sitting and at least I got a zombie villager to spawn so I covered the platform with cobblestone so he wouldn't burn to death and placed down the boat and lured him into the boat so now all I needed to do was to get the witch should be easy, right? Wrong. I waited forever and this witch didn't want to spawn, so out of frustration I went back to my pigment farm in hopes that maybe I could barter with a piglin for ender pearls or gravel to craft more dirt for my island. I found one. I placed some hay at the bottom to soften his landing. I removed it and killed the other pigman that was with him inside the cage. I placed the boat down, set him free, and gently nudged him into the boat, which didn't take long at all. Go. Get, get, go. Get in. Get in the. This way. Get in the boat. Simple as that. Afterwards, I went back and forth between trading with the piglin and farming pigmen for more gold and XP so that I can continue trading with the piglin. Not really sure what I was expecting to get from the piglin, but uh, I was hoping for maybe something good. Turns out I didn't really get a whole lot, and uh, I realized that my piglin decided he didn't like me anymore, so I had to put him in a cage. I traded with him a few more times, and I hit my mob farm a little bit, until I realized I wasn't really getting anything that good, so I went back to the overworld to keep trying to get another witch. Fortunately, when I got back to my mob grinder, I noticed that there was another zombie villager waiting for me to capture him. So I quickly towered up and blocked off the rest of the mob farm, clearing out the remaining mobs until it was just the zombie villager left. Then I placed a boat down and lured him into it. So at this point, I have three zombie villagers trapped. Now all that was left to do was to wait for another witch to spawn. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but this really did take me a while. I spent the entirety of day 18 at my mop grinder just waiting for another witch to spawn. I used some of my string to craft a few beds and restocked my wood supply before heading back to the mob grinder again. I also managed to get some armor. Although it wasn't very good, it was better than nothing, I guess. And finally, on the night of day 18, a witch appeared. So I expanded the platform a little bit and built a box for the witch to go in, placed a boat down, 
and trapped her inside. Shove the boat into the cobblestone box. And after taking a bunch of damage from her poison potions and running away to heal up, I finished walling her off. And now this is where I officially began to lose my mind. When I pushed the witch back into the corner, she got trapped inside of a block and I tried to push her away, but she was doing damage to me. Unfortunately, not a whole lot I could do and uh... Yay! I have to get another witch now. So I reopened the mob grinder and got back to work. At this point, I was determined to spend the rest of my life at this mob grinder, if that's what it took. I sat the whole night at the mob grinder again until the morning of day 20 when a new witch had finally spawned. And to spare you from seeing me trap a witch for the 100th time, I was not messing anything up this time. I even went to the nether to get enough gold to craft some more golden apples so I could tank the witch's potions better. I only farmed enough to craft one extra golden apple, which I figured would be enough to tank the potions. When I got back, it was nighttime already and I was eager to get started, so I wasted no time at all getting to the witch. I pushed the witch next to the villagers and walled her off with cobblestone. Now here is the part that's tricky. If you don't know, the way to cure a zombie villager, at least in Skyblock, into a normal villager is to get a witch to throw a potion of weakness onto the villager and then feed the villager a golden apple. This will start the curing process. The only issue is that a witch has a weird attack pattern which is based around how many blocks away from her you are and what your health is. So I did some research online about this and all I could find was that the witch has a 25% chance of throwing a weakness potion and you also have to be within 3 blocks or less of her. I spent the entire night and the entire day trying to get her to throw a weakness potion at me, and it just wasn't happening. I thought to myself, there was no possible way, it's just a 25% chance because she had thrown so many potions that statistically speaking she should have at least hit me with 5 potions by now. I knew something was off, so I put my mind to the test and began to formulate a new strategy to get her to throw a weakness potion. And sure enough, I was able to crack the code. I figured out that the witch will just about always throw a weakness potion at you if you are already poisoned and slowed. So what I had to do was first get 10 or so blocks away from her, which will prompt her to throw a slowness potion at me. After I got slowed, she would always throw a poison potion next. Then, once I was poisoned and slowed, if I got within 3 blocks of her, she would finally start throwing weakness potions. This allowed me to first cure one of the villagers, then after healing up and going back to get poisoned and slowed, I was able to get the second villager, and on day 22 I celebrated my accomplishment. And by celebrate, I mean I got rid of this dirty, stinky, ugly witch. So I removed the witch's cage and moved my villager to the center of the island. I fed him some food farmed wheat for the rest of the day so that I would have enough bread to feed both villagers and myself, and I moved my second villager over. I made sure to put beds down for the villagers and also an extra one so that they would start breeding. In the morning I crafted a loom and placed it down to see if my villagers would begin working, but then I realized it probably wasn't a great idea to have them standing next to my mob grinder, so I moved the loom and the villagers and I realized that they had already bred. I then crafted a smithing table and a composter and placed them down for my villagers. I chopped down my trees, hit my mob grinder a little bit, and restocked my cobblestone for the rest of the night. My next order of business was to begin working on an iron farm because I knew once I had leveled up my villagers they would require iron to trade for emeralds, but I didn't want to build it entirely out of cobblestone like I did with my mob grinder, so I ventured away from my island to find something different to build it out of. So I arrived at the new island and I completely destroyed this miniature taiga island leaving pretty much nothing behind. Well, literally nothing behind, not even a single leaf. And I headed back to my island with some saplings and a pumpkin and a little bit of wood and removed the entire bridge that I left. 
When I got back to the island, I removed the remaining oak trees and started planting spruce trees, and this one didn't even need bone meal, it grew so fast. I basically spent the entire rest of the night farming this new wood to add a bit more color to my island and to have something other than just plain old cobblestone to build my iron farm out of. And on the morning of day 25, I got to work. After placing the slabs, I chopped down some more trees, hit my mob grinder to get some more strings so I could make a couple more beds for my villagers, and then farmed some wheat until the middle of the night. I decided to give my villagers sleep deprivation because it was vitally important to me that they eat this bread I stayed up all night working for. I then smelted some stone and crafted brick slabs because, well, the cobblestone had started hurting my eyes, and I wanted to remove it and replace it with stone brick slabs because, I don't know, they just looked better. I silenced my mob farm, and traveled to the nether to get more gold because I wanted to trade with the piglin. I wanted to be able to get gravel and then convert that into flint so that I could make a fletching table, and I could use sticks to trade for emeralds instead of, well anything else, because sticks were so easy to get with my new tree farm. So I stood up top and let the pigmen pile up, killed them, and used the golden nuggets to craft ingots, traded with the piglin a few times, and after just a few trades I was able to get 25 gravel, which would be sufficient enough to make a fletching table. I traveled back to my overworld, placed the gravel down, destroyed it with a shovel, and I got quite a few flint. I then used the flint to craft my fletching table, placed it down, and then deprived my villagers of sleep once more. But for some reason they didn't want to take the job, so I smacked my mob grinder a couple more times, and then farmed a whole bunch of wheat for quite a long time, it was almost the entire night, and crafted it all into bread and fed my hungry villagers because they were too lazy to eat for themselves. And once again, I woke my villagers up in the middle of the night so I could trade with them some more and start leveling them up. The sooner that I could start unlocking better tools, weapons, and armor, the sooner that I would be able to go and fight the Ender Dragon. I farmed some carrots and crafted all of the wood that I had into sticks and shoved them down the villagers' pockets so that I could obtain as many emeralds as humanly possible. I sold all of the carrots to my farmer, all of the sticks I sold to my fletcher, and then used the remaining emeralds to buy bows for my Fletcher. And then when I eventually ran out of sticks, I went back to chopping down trees. And then sold all my sticks once again to the Fletcher. With my villagers now breeding faster than rabbits, I decided to build them their own little section on my island. So I started expanding one of the corners using the stone brick slabs that I had made, and using spruce slabs as a wall to stop them from falling over the edge. I then woke them up and accidentally hit one of my villagers, causing him to charge me extra, but I didn't really care. I got rid of their beds and moved them over to the other corner, I also destroyed my cobblestone generator along with the villagers work tables, and relocated them along with the villagers. I rebuilt the cobblestone generator, making sure to add two streams of water instead of just one. And look, an iron golem. I need some iron. Uh! Yeah, that was a bad idea. Totally worth it. After nearly dying to the iron golem, I mined some cobblestone and chopped some trees. Crafted a lectern for my villager and spent basically the rest of the night and most of the next day just stocking up on cobblestone and wood for my iron farm, only stopping to trade with my villagers. And then I began construction.
The iron farm that I built was not just an iron farm, but also an infinite villager breeder, which I will leave the link to the video in the description below. It's a guy named Impulse SV, and he makes a lot of great tutorials, and I would highly recommend you check his channel out. So the farm was just about finished. All I needed to do now was move the villagers into the farm and the beds that I had placed so that they would begin breeding. I also needed to trap a zombie, which is probably going to take me a while. So to get the villagers into the beds, I placed composters along the path up towards the iron farm and I removed their previous job stations, but didn't seem to be working too well because they just kind of stood around and did nothing. So I hit the mob grinder a little bit using the string that I obtained to craft another bed and I placed it down, and that seemed to do the trick. And I of course got attacked by phantoms once again, but this time I have a bow so it wasn't too big of a deal. Yeah, take that. I moved my farming villager into the carrot farm. And now all I had to do was get the last three villagers into the beds. Oh, and I also needed to get another farming villager because somehow my previous farmer ended up in the bed system. Now that I had three of the villagers in their beds, I fed them some food and waited until I could get my farming villager. I smacked my mob grinder a little bit and crafted another bed. On the morning of day 35, I kept farming my mob grinder so that I could craft more beds to get more villagers. And then I checked to see if my villager breeder was working. But for some reason, these little buggers just kept trying to go back to their parents. I don't know why, but every time they would fall through the hole in the iron farm, they would just try to run back up the staircase, or they would sit at the bottom and just stand there and do circles. So I decided to baby-proof my iron farm and make a staircase that only adults could climb up. And as you can clearly see, yeah, they just weren't having it. He's just staring at me. So I left the baby alone and farmed more string for beds, harvested my wheat, and restocked my wood supply. I didn't fully realize this at the time, but I would need to farm a lot more wood in order to keep leveling up my villagers. I fed my villagers again, hit my mob grinder some more, chased the baby around, went back to hitting my mob grinder, and a creeper nearly killed me. Luckily he didn't do that much damage and I just went back to farming. And then I just restocked my cobblestone supply until the morning of day 37. At this point, I had a decent amount of villagers, so I wanted to keep leveling them up so that I could obtain better tools and use the emeralds to buy weapons and armor eventually. And the running theme over the next few weeks is that I would trade with my villagers in the morning until I ran out of wood and have to go chop more trees. I was pretty stumped. Oh, and I got another villager to be a farmer. And now the last thing I need to do for my iron farm would be to trap a zombie in this little one by one Should be pretty easy. I built a barrier around the one by one so the zombie would walk right in, and then I built a platform connected to it to get zombies to spawn. Unfortunately, I decided to build it in the morning, and so I would have to wait until nighttime to get a zombie to spawn. I did my routine villager trades to get more emeralds and to level them up. I even harvested some potatoes so that I could level up my farming villager, but he was totally ripping me off. And at this point, I had seven working villagers. I checked my platform throughout the night for zombies, but none of them spawned. The best I could do was a spider. So I hit my mob grinder, made another bed, expanded my platform, and I found a zombie. To trap him, I lured him into the water of the iron farm, and then I put some blocks down so that he could jump up on top of them and follow me up the staircase. All I had to do now was stand above the one by one and he would walk right in. Well, now he did. Now in order to get the zombie to not despawn, I needed to get him to pick up an item. The only problem with this is that not all zombies will pick items up. Fantastic! So my other option would be to get a name tag and place it on the zombie. But the only way I can get a name tag is through fishing or a master level librarian, so I decided to start leveling up a librarian. 
In the meantime, I wanted to make sure that my iron farm worked, so I placed the lava down, and sure enough, it was doing its job. Day 39, I didn't really do a whole lot. I bought some beds for two emeralds apiece, sold some sticks, leveled up my toolsmith, sold even more sticks, and I actually got a pretty decent pickaxe trade. Which, of course, I had to test it out. And let me tell you, this felt so nice compared to the stone tools I got used to using. I had a little too much fun. And I got an efficiency 2 diamond shovel. And I'm not sure what I was thinking, but of course my zombie despawned. I found an enderman and tried to trap it and get pearls again, but of course... He didn't drop anything. With the zombie despawning, I went back and rebuilt the cage and the bridge to connect the platform and the iron farm together. And I cleaned up the mobs that were on the platform. Take that. Yeah, no. Yeah, take that. I deprived my toolsmith of sleep once again and found that he had a diamond pickaxe trade, which I took immediately. On day 40, I expanded my platform a little bit, and I think I realized the zombies weren't spawning on my platform because they were spawning on the roof of my mob grinder. The only thing I could get to spawn were spiders. What is this guy doing? After witnessing the baby villager perform an exorcism on himself, I went back to chop more trees and sell my villagers more sticks. I worked on leveling up my librarian, and then I worked on making a new cobblestone generator, something that would be able to keep up with the demand of my new efficiency pickaxes. And on day 41, I spent a lot of time testing out my new pickaxes and cobblestone generator. I restocked my wood supply once again. And while I was chopping trees, I noticed that a zombie had finally spawned on my platform. But first, I had to clear out the mobs that spawned with him. So I used my training from when I used to play Call of Duty Zombies to lure the zombie away, and then I started killing the extra mobs. This was also good practice for the dragon fight, because my shots with the bow were starting to get a little bit cleaner. But when I went back to my trap, I had noticed a zombie had already walked his way inside, so I... disposed of the extra zombie. In the morning, I went back to my villagers and started selling the rest of my sticks that I had crafted. And I focused on my librarian, because once he's max level, I know that I can buy a name tag from him. And I didn't actually know that, I just looked it up on the wiki. Finally, I can buy the name tag. Yeah, he despawned again. So I mined away my frustration until night came and I could work on getting another zombie. Again. And praise god, another one had already spawned by the time I came over here. Actually, two of them spawned, so I quickly got rid of the mobs on the platform and went back to my zombie trap and got rid of the second one. So now all that was left to do was to put a name tag on the zombie and he won't despawn. But I didn't realize that you actually need an anvil to rename the name tag, and then you can put it on the zombie. So, yeah. I afk to my iron farm until I got enough iron to craft an anvil. Once I crafted the anvil, I renamed the name tag, and placed it on the zombie. I then destroyed the platform that I made to spawn zombies, and then I removed the staircase leading up to where the zombie trap was. And then I redesigned the collection center for the iron farm. And I think it came out pretty nice. I chopped a couple trees, and now that the iron farm was up and running on its own, I realized that I wouldn't be able to farm any more cobblestone unless I got another lava source, because the first lava source was moved from my cobblestone generator to the iron farm. Luckily, I remembered seeing an island in the nether that had lava on it. The only issue was that it was 20 or so blocks down below me, so... What I had to do was get some weeping vines from a nearby island first, and then use those to climb my way down to the island that had lava on it. With the vines collected, I bridged my way towards the island with lava. I killed the mobs that were on the island, placed my vines down, and then used bone meal to make it grow all the way down towards the island, and then I turned into Tarzan and made my way down. And since I was already down here, I figured I would collect an extra little bit of obsidian. I picked up a couple sources of lava and then made my way back up.
And when I arrived back home, it was already day 45. I collected some stone from my furnaces. I bought a few more diamond pickaxes from my toolsmith, upgrading my current pickaxe to an efficiency 3. And I sold sticks, crafted sticks, sold more sticks, bought more pickaxes, bought an efficiency 2 diamond shovel, and used the ones that I bought to upgrade my current shovel to an efficiency 4. And to be honest, I didn't even really need an efficiency 4 shovel, I just got it because I could. I placed another smithing table for another toolsmith because I still didn't have an axe yet. And then I crafted a blast furnace so that I could start working towards getting better armor. And I finally got my diamond pickaxe to efficiency 4. I traded with my villagers some more to keep leveling them up. Crafted a couple of beds so that I could get more villagers for my villager army. And woke my toolsmith up in the middle of the night to upgrade my axe. And of course, I used it immediately. It was fast. And then it dawned on me that I have iron now and I can actually craft hoppers, so I upgraded my iron farm to be 100% fully automatic. And I also did the same for my cobblestone generator. This was a huge time saver because the cobblestone that I mined sometimes would go into the lava and I would lose cobblestone, but now with the hoppers, the cobblestone would just go straight into the hopper. In the morning, I crafted a ton of sticks, sold them to my Fletcher, and noticed that my toolsmith had a diamond axe, but I needed more emeralds to buy it. Now, I really was going to buy that axe, but the Efficiency 5 pickaxe looked a little bit more appealing to me. And after selling a bunch more sticks, I was only one emerald short of getting the diamond axe, so I went back to my cobblestone generator and mined away the pain again. I collected my iron, got some more sticks to sell to my Fletchers, and got enough emeralds to finally get the diamond axe. I crafted a couple grindstones to get a weaponsmith because I had good tools now, but I didn't really have any good weapons. I had an iron sword that was mediocre at best, and a bow that I got from my mob grinder which wasn't going to be enough for me to take down the ender dragon. I also placed down another blast furnace to get some more armor. At this point, the days were getting pretty repetitive because the only thing I was doing now was just farming wood to craft sticks and iron and selling them to my villagers until I get enough emeralds to upgrade my tools, armor, and weapons so that I could take on the ender dragon. On day 47, I decided to give my mob grinder a proper collection system because I was tired of emptying junk from my inventory all the time. And I also finally got rid of the platform that I was using to hold the witch in. I also started getting tired of looking at the cobblestone and oak stairs and decided my island needed a whole makeover. At this point, the days were becoming extremely repetitive and boring, and although I would love to show you everything that I did, I know that nobody really wants to see that, and this video would end up being way too long, so I'll just give you the highlights instead. First was my pickaxe, which I upgraded to an efficiency 4, but I didn't have the levels to fully upgrade it to efficiency 5 yet. Next was my armor, which I got to max level and unlocked diamond armor, which was a huge milestone. Then I farmed my mob grinder for a little bit, and finally upgraded my pickaxe to efficiency 5. Finally got myself a diamond sword. And at one point, had nearly two stacks of emeralds. I unlocked an Unbreaking 3 book from my librarian. I bought some bows from my Fletcher, which I used to combine with the bow that I already had to get Power 3 Unbreaking 2. I expanded my base some more, I upgraded my helmet to protection 3, got more sharpness 2 swords to start combining towards the sharpness 4, and relocated my villagers, I continued expanding my base, and re-employed my villagers on day 53. I then used the XP that I got from trading with the villagers to upgrade my sword to a sharpness 4 finally. I also unlocked a feather falling 3 book which was pretty much needed if I was going to fight the dragon. I threw some lanterns up around my base, and also expanded the area just a little bit with some stone bricks to make sure that the villagers wouldn't just fall over the edge, or me, because I was pretty clumsy. I also moved my tree farm and nearly fell through the map, 
and I tried expanding the grass onto a platform so that I could get neutral mobs to spawn, but it was very unlikely to happen. I got a silk touch book, and I was going to put it on my pickaxe, but I didn't have the levels yet for that. Oops. And I think it was on day 56 that I unlocked the infinity book. And shortly after, on the same day, I unlocked mending as well. I put the infinity enchantment on my bow. And finally, after many many days of trying and trying, I got a protection 3 book. I knew that the ender dragon fight was going to happen very soon. I upgraded my chest plate to protection 3 and put mending on my helmet and my chest. And then I got rid of a librarian because he wasn't giving me anything good. Ow. nerd. I needed more fletchers to keep up with my stick supply, so I put down three more fletching tables. This should be enough. I put unbreaking three on my diamond sword, and I finally put mending on my axe. I realized that I was going to need ender pearls if I wanted to find the end portal, but my luck with endermen had been trash and I figured the best way to get ender pearls would be to level up a cleric since they sell ender pearls. But I would need blaze rods to craft the brewing stand, so I started bridging towards another fortress that I saw when I was collecting lava from before. Oh, and I completed the sniper duel achievement. Once I arrived, I saw some blazes just up ahead, so I ran straight towards them thinking that I would just kill them and grab my one blaze rod and be done. But I didn't realize just how much range and damage that the blazes could do to me. So I had to retreat and decided that I would just come back when I had some better gear. When I got home, I remembered I had some potions of fire resistance, so I grabbed them just in case. I finally bought a few more bows for my Fletcher and decided to finally upgrade my bow to a power 4. But I didn't have enough XP. So going against my better judgment, I went back and decided to risk it anyways with a power 3 bow just to try to get one more blaze rod. How hard could it be? And I actually was doing pretty fine for a little while until the mobs started to swarm me and I had to retreat on just a few hearts. And of course, me being stubborn, I decided to try one last time. So I healed back up and kept my distance, killing a blaze, which finally dropped me a blaze rod. And to try and prevent the mobs from spawning, I placed slabs down all over the walkway, but this didn't really help as much as I thought it would. I moved forward and kept placing slabs while taking out more blazes, trying to get a few more blaze rods, but I only ended up getting two. Having achieved what I came here for, I decided to head back home. When I arrived back home, it was already day 61, and I really wanted to get started on this dragon fight, so I crafted a brewing stand, placed it down, and started leveling up my cleric. I got enough XP to upgrade my bow to power 4, Unfortunately though, it had too many enchantments, so I couldn't upgrade it to power 5. I put protection 3 on my leggings, bought a couple more mending books, and upgraded my boots, finally putting protection 3 and mending on them. I upgraded my chest to protection 4, put mending on my leggings, and upgraded them to protection 4 as well, and was about to upgrade my helmet, but I didn't have enough levels. So I traded with my fletchers, Almost committed genocide on my villagers. And I got enough XP to upgrade my helmet and my boots. Which was the last piece of armor that I needed to fully complete my set. With my armor set fully completed, now the only thing I needed was a power 5 bow. I upgraded it to power 4, but I didn't have the XP for level 5 yet. So it was back to my mob farm, and this time I went to my pigmen farm because pigmen give you more XP than regular mobs. Once I got the XP I needed, I returned home and instantly upgraded my bow. And I tried to put mending on it, but I already had too many enchantments. At this point, the only thing I needed to go to the dragon would be ender pearls, which I could buy from a cleric maxed out, so I leveled up my cleric. Unfortunately, he was too greedy and didn't want to sell me ender pearls. 
So I decided to go back to the Nether Fortress to get enough blaze rods so that I can craft more brewing stands for extra clerics, and the Eyes of Ender that I would need for the End Portal. This time I was feeling more confident because I had fully upgraded armor and a really high tier bow. I made my way into the fortress, clearing out the mobs in my way with the bow and only switching to my sword if they got too close. I wanted to get to the center of this crossway and start to put some walls up so that I could separate myself from the wither skeletons and the zombie pigmens, and then kill the blazes individually with my bow. After fighting through hell and back, I finally made it to the center and I started putting the walls up. I then used slabs to create a narrow window to shoot mobs through with my bow without getting hit in return. And after killing a few blazes, I realized that they weren't really dropping the blaze rods very often, and whenever they did, there was a 50% chance they would just fall into the void because the blazes were flying outside of the fortress. So my new plan was to find another blaze spawner that I could build a wall around and trap the blazes inside and ensure that all the blaze rods would drop inside the room. I dug down and started mining my way towards another blaze spawner. And I didn't really know where I was going, I just kind of started mining and tunneling and hoping that I would find something eventually. Which I did, I found a little area that looked like it would have a blaze spawner in it, so I mined up to check it out. I ran inside ignoring the mobs overhead and found the room with a spawner that I was looking for. I cleared out the blazes and started building up around it and closing off the entrances outside of the blaze spawner so I didn't get stabbed in the back by wither skeletons. My strategy was to shoot the blazes with my bow through the fences, then run in to collect the blaze rods, and run back to wait for more blazes to spawn, and just repeat this until I got enough rods that I wouldn't have to come back to this hell, because fighting my way through this fortress was actually painful. And after a few minutes of farming, I got quite a few blaze rods. With the blaze rods secured, I started making my way back to where I came from. Which, I'm not gonna lie, was a bit of a chore because I couldn't remember where my tunnel was, so I just mined for a little bit until I figured it out. I pillared up to the surface and cleared out the mobs in my pathway and got the hell out of there. I returned home on day 67. I immediately went to my crafting bench and made some brewing stands to get more clerics. Crafted a couple Eyes of Ender. And then I spent the entire night chopping trees because I knew I would need a ton of blocks to bridge my way to the end portal, and wood was easier to chop than mining cobblestone. I also moved my brewing stands over to these villagers because I was tired of them living on my island for free. I restocked my food supply, and started leveling up my clerics. And finally, one of the clerics decided to sell me ender pearls. I bought as many as I could, and then I crafted the ones that I bought into Eyes of Ender. But I ran out of emeralds, so it was back to selling sticks, and then buying more ender pearls, and crafting the rest of my eyes of ender. I ended up crafting around 20 because I wanted to have enough in case I lost some to the void. I also crafted an ender chest so that I could carry more materials with me for the fight, put mending on my pickaxe, and plenty of rockets for when I got my elytra and became a flying boy. At this point, I had quite a few blocks in my ender chest, but I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't run out just in case, so I spent the rest of the night chopping trees. That should be enough. I crafted an anvil and put it in my ender chest just in case, as well as a water bucket. And for safe measure, I brought a second one. I crafted some wooden slabs and threw up my eye of ender to see which way I would be heading. I grabbed my ender chest and crafted a couple more eyes of ender just in case. And on day 69, it was time to finally leave my island. With my wood slabs in hand, I braved the void, bridging across countless blocks on my way to face the dragon. After a day or so of bridging, I threw up another Eye of Ender just to make sure that I was going in the correct direction. Which I was. And unfortunately, I lost one of my eyes. All in all, it was pretty peaceful, except for the time that I got attacked by phantoms. I started sniping them with my bow, and took them out one by one. Unfortunately, one hit me and knocked me into the void, but luckily, I was thinking ahead and prepared for that with my bucket of water. I was definitely panicking at this point, but I tried to maintain my composure as I knew I was super close to achieving my goal. I kept pulling back my bow and firing into the phantoms until I removed every single one of them from the sky. And thus, I arrived back to my platform and continued on bridging. 
In the morning, I threw up another eye to make sure I was still going in the right direction, and I ended up needing to make a turn, so I made a 90 degree angle and continued on into the void. As night fell upon me, I reached the location of the end portal. I found myself suspended in the air just above it. In an attempt to land safely, I placed a bucket of water beneath me. However, I opened my inventory and didn't realize the water was pushing me down, and I plunged to the ground before the water could break my fall, landing in a horde of mobs. With only a sliver of health left, I quickly paused my game to regain my composure. After I changed my underwear, I unpaused and against all odds managed to narrowly escape the mob-infested situation with just half a heart to spare. The only thing that prevented me from dying in this situation was my shield. But while I was standing there embracing my shield, all I began to think about was the hours of hard work I put into getting to this point, and how I was about to lose it all. But to my surprise, all of the skeletons ended up falling into the void, and I felt a huge sigh of relief. So I immediately started to surround myself with blocks to give myself some cover while I healed back up. And once I secured my perimeter, I ate some food and slowly regenerated my health before entering the room. Inside the end portal room, there's a silverfish spawner, which I was going to need to clear out before I could go inside. So I started slicing and dicing my way in. And upon entering, I started to get swarmed. I was already losing all of the health that I had just regenerated, and in a panic, I hit the lava block, which caused me to lose health even faster. So I quickly made a run for it, destroying the silverfish spawner, and clearing out the rest of the silverfish. And I'm not going to lie to you, this was definitely the most stressful day that I've ever had during this challenge. After over 70 days of tireless preparation, the time had finally come to step into the unknown and face off against the formidable Ender Dragon. Armed with determination, I placed the eyes of Ender, lit up the room, and jumped in. I bridged my way to the central island, and ran towards my opponent. My first order of business was to eliminate the end crystals that fueled its power. Using my trusty bow, I started picking them off one by one. I also had to make sure I didn't stand in one place for too long because the dragon's breath would kill me. The unarmored end crystals weren't too hard to take out, but the armored ones required a little bit of an angle to get under. But with my pinpoint accuracy, I took them out in just one shot. The last crystal, however, required a more daring approach, so I towered up to its perch and took it out point blank. Now with all of the crystals gone, the battle against the dragon commenced. I steadily chipped away at its health one shot at a time. Since I was on top of a tower, I was in an advantageous position, allowing me to take numerous shots at the dragon for free without too much worry. Until the dragon's breath landed on me and I was forced to jump off my tower and finish the fight on the ground. I continued to line up my shots from below him, slowly chipping away at his health. Until he was fed up and started coming down to ground level so that he could perch. When perched, the dragon doesn't take any damage, so I backed away and used that time to eat some food and heal back up. As he flew away, I continued to lay into him with arrows until he perched again for his second and final time. Understanding his vulnerability, I seized the moment. I quickly switched from my bow to my sword and launched into a relentless assault, striking into the heart of the beast over and over and over again. As the dragon attempted to escape, I switched back to my trusty bow, relentlessly firing arrows until he teetered on the brink of death. Knowing the fight was over, I locked onto the creature, drawing my bowstring for one last decisive shot, and then I let loose the final arrow. The impact marked the end of the dragon's reign, and victory was finally mine. As I admire my accomplishment, I look- Really? Now that the dragon was finally defeated, I used his XP to repair my weapons and armor. My next goal was to obtain an elytra which I would have to venture into end cities for, 
So I took the opportunity to build a small hut and farm some endermen so that I had pearls while I was looting and fighting shulkers. After gathering enough pearls, I blocked off the end portal and collected the prized dragon egg. I then made my way over to the gateway and pillared up. I built a small platform and threw my ender pearl in. Once I arrived, I ran forward and started collecting some of these things. I didn't know what they were at the time because I haven't played this game in five years. And after running for what seemed like an eternity, I found an end city. So I made my way towards it and pillared up to the top. I boarded the ship and found out that this is my new most hated mob in all of Minecraft. I thought that the witch was bad, but nah. The witch ain't got nothing on them. You'll see why when I start fighting more of them. I grabbed a couple of potions out of the brewing stand, which I probably wasn't going to use, I just wanted to grab them anyways, and I made my way down to the shulker that was guarding the elytra. After taking him out, I finally got my wings. I found some decent loot in the chests, including diamond leggings with unbreaking on them and a pretty good pickaxe. I used the anvil in my ender chest to combine my leggings together and equipped my elytra. Look how beautiful. I mined some of the blocks from the ship in case I wanted to use them for builds in the future, and I was ready to go exploring. But I obviously didn't know how to fly yet. <laughs> After a few attempts, I finally figured it out. It's been five years, give me a break. So it was time to start looting and collecting shulker shells so that I could make shulker boxes. And remember when I said that this was my new most hated mob in Minecraft? This is why. Every single room I would go into, I was getting shot and blasted and thrown into the air. It was very annoying. After floating to the ceiling like the kid from Willy Wonka, I got some gold and an armor trim from one of the chests. I used the shulker shells to craft some shulker boxes because my inventory was getting pretty full, and I flew to the next city. In the chests in the next room, I got some diamonds and a couple decent pickaxes that I could use. Then I went on another killing spree. In this chest, I got more diamonds, a sword, and some pretty good diamond boots, some gold ingots, and a decent shovel with Curse of Vanishing, which I don't think is going to be useful. And then it was on to the next city. After landing on the next ship, I went to the front and took the dragon head with me. I went underneath and collected another elytra. The loot from these chests weren't nearly as good as the previous ones, but I just went ahead and took them anyways, cause... Why not? And I moved on to the next city. And I'm still trying to get used to this whole landing thing. I took out the next shulker and got another elytra. From this chest, I got some iron and a pickaxe with fortune on it, and the second chest, I got some gold horse armor and a really good helmet, which I combined with my helmet for a nice upgrade. And now that I felt comfortable with all of the loot that I obtained, I started heading back home and made my way to the gateway. I jumped through, ran to the end portal, and jumped in. I arrived back home to my island on day 74. And now, feast your eyes upon the fruits of my labor as I unveil the riches I've gathered from the mystical cities beyond. In all seriousness though, I did get a lot of good loot, including four elytras and plenty of shulker shells, ensuring I wouldn't have to go back for a long time. I wanted to try out my armor trim, and after testing different ones, I decided on lapis. I also went ahead and upgraded my elytra, putting unbreaking and mending on it. And I figured now was as good a time as any to replace the old cobblestone with stone brick slabs. And I was not expecting it to take this long, but it actually ended up taking me all of day 75. I also removed the wooden slabs and replaced them with stone brick because I liked the look better. And then I decided it was time to remove the old wooden fountain and replace it with something bigger and better. After messing around with some different designs, I finally settled on an obsidian and glowstone look. I even added a couple bells and called my villagers in for a meeting but they didn't respect my authority quite yet, so I decided to add some dragon heads and a dragon egg to show them who the real leader of this island is. 
and I think it came out looking pretty nice. I changed the floor of my mob grinder to spruce slabs, and I added a square of grass to try to get passive mobs to spawn. And then I expanded the platform so that I could move my tree farm to something a bit more appropriate. At this point, I wanted to start building a proper storage room as well as add a bit more color to my island, so I ventured off into the void to explore some of the other islands, starting with collecting dirt. The next island I landed on was sort of like a flying geode. I don't know what you would call it, but it had amethyst clusters as well as block of crystals, so I collected as many as I could and put them in my shulker box. I decided that I didn't have quite enough, and I liked the way that these blocks looked, so I collected a few more before heading on to the next island. The next place I landed had some mossy cobblestone as well as redstone underneath, so I collected the redstone as well as the cobblestone. Next up was the deep dark biome, which I had never seen before since being away from Minecraft for so many years, so I started collecting blocks I thought looked cool and that I could use in my builds. However, while I was mining, I stumbled upon some shriekers. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but these shriekers will alert the new boss that you're in the area, and after it shrieks three times, the new boss, aka the warden, will spawn. Now, obviously, I didn't realize that was going to happen, so I just kept looting, and I found some pretty good stuff, including an enchanted golden apple. I continued on about my merry business until the shrieker shrieked for a third time and caused the warden to crawl straight out of hell and run straight at me. And I clearly didn't know what I was getting myself into because I just ran straight up to him and started swinging and shooting him with my bow. But I would soon learn that the warden has the most hit points of any mob in the game and can nearly kill me with just one swing. After shooting him with my bow a few times, I decided to fly away so that I could get the high ground and reposition myself to shoot him with my bow some more. But I couldn't seem to find where he went. I found him. And this is the moment that I realized I'm probably way in over my head. At the same time though, I only fought the Ender Dragon and I wanted to get a little bit more content for the video and not end it on just 100 days with me building, so I decided I was going to kill him. I was able to get on an island across from the Warden and shoot him with my bow quite a few times, before I had to fly away because I didn't realize that he had a ranged attack. Ow. So I flew away and repositioned myself once again, and continued shooting him with my bow. But as soon as I started to shoot him, my vision got blurred, so I flew away and ate an enchanted golden apple that I found earlier so that I could heal back up because I was worried I was going to die. After healing up, I flew back in to continue my assault, laying into him with every single shot that I could until I tanked one too many hits and I had to fly away again to heal back up. After healing, I came back in again to continue the fight, but he demonstrated that he can clearly still hit me even when I'm flying, which caused me to be even more nervous about this fight. So I repositioned myself once again, and this time I had just enough distance between us that I was able to freely hit him with my bow, and he couldn't hit me. And after a few more shots, he was finally defeated. Once he was dead, I quickly ran over to his dead corpse to see what magnificent loot he dropped me. Unfortunately, the hardest boss in the game doesn't really drop anything worth taking. Thank you, Mojang. And to add insult to injury, another warden started spawning right after I killed the first one, which was my cue to get the hell out of there. I flew over to the stronghold where the end portal was, I looted some bookshelves, and found a couple of armor trims in the chests. I made my way to another island and grabbed a couple of gold blocks. And at the neighboring island, I found a chest filled with a buried treasure map, so I figured, why not? After nailing the landing, I checked the treasure chest, and it had some gold ingots, TNT, and a heart of the sea. And the second treasure chest had basically the same thing. The next island I landed on had some grass, so I took the opportunity to collect it. And I decided to give the treasure chests one last chance, which was a bad idea. And then I made my way back home. 
Good boy. I took the armor trims that I found while exploring and applied them to the rest of my armor set. I finally became a Power Ranger. Now it was time to start building my storage room. I started by placing some of the crystals down in a way that looked like they just naturally grew there. I then outlined the base of the crystals with Skulk and added some Skulk sensors. I used stone bricks to outline the storage room, and this is what it turned out like. I'm going to upgrade this later, but this will do for now. I wanted to put a house somewhere on my island, so I worked for numerous days building until it was completed. After multiple days of working tirelessly, this was the end result. The house had numerous rooms with windows all around, as well as bamboo planted around the outside, so I had something to look at through my windows. I really liked the end result, considering I made everything up as I went, and I haven't built a house in Minecraft in years. With only a few days left, I felt like there was still one last goal for me to achieve. I wanted to get a totem of the undying, so I started preparing by upgrading my sword to sharpness 5. Next, I was going to need a woodland mansion map, so I crafted a cartography table, and placed it down and waited for a cartographer. I worked on leveling him up, and because I was low on paper, I had to build a sugarcane farm to get the extra paper I would need until I unlocked the map trade. Once it was unlocked, all I needed to do was craft a compass and complete the trade. Once I had the map, I grabbed everything I would need and set off in search of the mansion. I took a brief pit stop to destroy a cherry grove biome so I could add it to my home and I went back to the skies. After flying all day, I reached the correct z-axis and started heading west, and then the mansion was finally in sight. I landed on the roof and mined out a hole to see if I could find the evoker. And there he was. I took him out with a couple of bow shots and grabbed my totem. I made my way through the mansion, clearing out multiple rooms and picking up a few extra totems. I wanted to continue exploring, but the room started getting overrun with mobs, so I decided it was best if I headed back home. With my totem in hand, I put my elytra back on and flew away. I also stopped to pick up a few extra stacks of sand from a nearby island, and then I was home at last. All in all, I came out with five totems in total, which should be plenty. I took a look around and realized that I had removed all of the farms when I was redesigning my island, so I decided to add a few more farms next to my trees. Next, I wanted to add more color, so I built an area for a cherry grove biome. After planting and bone milling a few trees, I finally got some that grew in a way that I liked. It was at this point I realized that the bridge I had built to the end portal previously was still there, so I figured now would be the time to remove it. And so I spent the entire night removing it until it couldn't be seen from my island. I arrived back home on the morning of day 99. I tended to my chorus fruit trees, which had grown out of control, and messed with my villagers one last time. And with all of my goals accomplished, I wanted to give you one last look over my home to show you all that I achieved during my 100 days.
Now, all that's left to do is sleep. And so, on the dawn of day 100, we awake. It hasn't been an easy journey. We've confronted countless challenges and teetered on the brink of death more times than we can count. But through it all, we emerged victorious. This was the story of how I survived for 100 days of Skyblock in Hardcore Minecraft. Thank you for watching. <laughs>